recording now. So again, I hope your evening's going well so far. Thank you for joining us for a Focus on Your Future. Um, and without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our military reps. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen and uh, Steve and Rachel, I actually uh, shortened my uh, deck. As I know for sure, we've got three of us presenting. Uh, yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, ma'am. We're good. Okay. So uh, my name is Jan Meyer. I am a Naval Academy graduate. Uh, my husband's a Naval Academy graduate. My son is a Naval Academy graduate. And my future daughter-in-law <laughs> is a Naval Academy graduate. Uh, so I was a Civil Engineer Corps officer. My husband flew. Um, a six is my son is a nuclear uh, engineer on a submarine and his fiance is a surface warfare officer. So I think we've got almost all the bases covered. Um, I want to talk to you about the top reasons to go um, to, I gear my presentation around Navy. I'm a fan of all the academies, but obviously um, tonight I'm representing the Naval Academy. Um, but it is a full scholarship. It's a full ride. You've got a guaranteed job after graduation. I'm going to show you what you can do. Uh, the location is fantastic. Uh, we are developing leaders for America for all walks of society, civilian and military. Um, and uh, we have a very high graduation rate. It is very tough to get in. We have about a seven or eight percent acceptance rate, which is like going to an Ivy League school. Uh, but once you get there, we're going to make sure you graduate, and there are a lot of resources to help you do that. As I mentioned, it's a full ride, so you're receiving full pay and benefits while you're there. You're also, um, as a midshipman, you're getting that $1,200 a month, but you're seeing about $100 to $500 of that in cash. You get more each year as you gain more benefits, as you get more seizure at the academy. But that money is going into an account for you. And um, But they will issue everything to you from your computer and your printer down to your toothbrush and literally your underwear. So it is definitely a full ride. Um, you also live on the academy all four years. So your housing and benefits are, are provided. So what does that mean? Well, everybody graduates. It's an accredited four-year college engineering school. Um, we do have non-engineering majors, but they all take engineering classes. Uh, you do graduate with that Bachelor of Science, and you get commissioned in either the Navy or the Marine Corps, and you serve a five-year minimum service commitment, depending on uh, what you do for a job. You can, um, I always tell, tell students, um, Navy is a great opportunity for you if you're not sure what you want to do in the military because you can be on the water, under the water in a submarine, you can fly, uh, and you can go special warfare. Navy SEALs, all kinds of different things. We have graduates from all walks of life who, um, you know, go into many different uh, jobs that are successful. Um, I failed to mention in the last go around that this upcoming SpaceX NASA Dragon Crew 5 mission to the International Space Station is coming up next week. Nicole Mann is a personal friend of mine. She's the crew commander and she's a 1999 graduate of the Naval Academy. So we're very excited for her. Uh, she will potentially be the first woman to walk on the moon someday. She's part of Artemis as well. Uh, but again, if you don't know if you want to do anything to do with water, you can also go Marine Corps. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, you know, the Naval Academy, we do brag, as all of the academies do, about what a wonderful place and institution we are. As I mentioned, we're an accredited engineering school. It is a tough place to be at because you are taking a four-year accredited engineering curriculum as well as a bunch of Navy classes. So you may be taking 19 to 23 units a semester instead of 15 um, or 17 like you would in a civilian school. But you can see that we rank very well. Uh, we are also some of the highest paid income um, earners over, the, over people's careers, both in and out of the Navy. Okay. So where are we? We're located on the Severn River right in downtown Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, you literally walk outside the gates of the yard and you are in Annapolis. We have a very great uh, relationship with the local community, so it's really great for liberty. And you don't have to have a car to go anywhere once you're there. Uh, but it is like being in your own little cocoon, in your own little um, city, really behind the gates, because we've got everything from barbershop to stores to your housing and, and world-class um, facilities for athletics. 
The brigade is about 4,500 midshipmen, about 30% of those um, are women, very culturally diverse from every walk of life and from many other countries. We have exchange students who actually come to the academy from other countries as well. Uh, basic eligibility is the same uh, for all of the academies. You've got to be at least 17 years old and no more than 23 on the day that you walk in. Uh, keep your nose clean, don't get into trouble. Uh, stay away from drugs, don't get into legal trouble. Uh, cannot be married or be pregnant or be responsible for a child and you have to be a US citizen. There are 26 majors available at the Naval Academy and uh, minors in languages as well. Um, you'll see most of the majors are STEM oriented again. Uh, we do have cyber and math and computers and, and English and history and poli sci and those types of majors as well. Uh, this class size is very small. You will know your professors. Uh, the ratio is about eight to one. 50% um, of the staff are military, 50% are civilian. The civilian are tenured experts in their fields but they do not have teaching assistants or research assistants. They all teach their own classes. So when I went to Stanford for my master's degree on the Navy's nickel, I was still taught by TAs and RAs in some instances. So that does not happen. Um, at the Naval Academy, you are taught by your professors who are available six days a week to tutor you and help you get through the academy. Um, we are a D1. Uh, school for sports, so they do recruit for, recruit for some of the um, sports. You can see here there's a list of all of the athletics, both men and women and co-ed. Everybody at the academy is an athlete, whether you play a varsity sport or not. So there are also club sports and there are also intramural sports that they play and compete at the company or battalion level um, at the academy. Lots of extracurricular activities, um, everything from music and sports, of course, but music and cultural theater, um, service organizations, if you like doing community service. There are also other organizations that are more academically or religiously oriented, as well as if you wanna get your pilot's license, if you wanna go skydiving, any of that sort of thing, there are all kinds of activities at the academy. In addition, you do have the opportunity to study abroad. As I said, you can be 23 um, when you enter, which means some of you may have had college classes under your belt. You do get credit for those classes, but everybody still attends for four full years. But it does mean it may open up time in your schedule so that you can maybe start your master's degree or take advantage of one of these study abroad opportunities. So basic advice for admission, if this all sounds good to you, is typical of an Ivy League school. We're looking for that round rounded uh, candidate that can walk and chew them at the same time, has excelled academically. Um, we'd rather see you get a B in an AP class than straight A's in not AP classes. We want to see that you're challenging yourself and that you can handle college level academics. We'd rather that you show leadership as a demonstrated leadership rather than just the, the possibility or potential leadership, which means I'd rather see you be the president or an officer in one or two clubs instead of a member of 10 clubs. We also want to see that sense of responsibility because you've gone back consistently to the same service organizations to actually uh, do community service. Okay, the application is online. Um, it is not a standard, you know, application like for all of the um, state, you know, schools for California, et cetera, uh, but it is online. And the two things that are different on here are number two, the candidate fitness assessment, because we are looking again for that full person concept. We're looking at you physically as well as medically, number 10, uh, which civilian schools do not require. The candidate cycle um, really begins your junior year. Some of you are in your senior year and it's not too late. You have till the 31st of January to get your application in. But really, uh, for those of you who may not be seniors, you wanna begin taking your SATs in January of your junior year, and you should try to get your application done as complete as possible the summer before your senior year, uh, because you do need to allow time to enjoy your senior year as well as get your congressional nomination packages in uh, for your nominations. So do follow us on all these social media platforms. Here is my information. I will also put it in the chat for you. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions um, and would like to know more about the Naval Academy. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve Hartman to talk to you about West Point. Uh, Steve, you're yeah. muted.
Thank you. There we go. How about now? All good. Good? Okay, thank you. Well, my slides did it to me again, so it's not on my shared screen, and I don't know why. Let's see here. Participants can see your screen. It's not there. Hold on. Just not my day. I had a late day at work, and I had got stuck, and I had everything set up on my work computer, and uh, what happened to it here? Here's my drive. Uh, there we go. Okay, now I'm good. All right, let's go share screen. There we go. Yeah, I'll try to abbreviate my briefing uh, sort of like Jan did. So good, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Colonel Retired Steve Hartman. Uh, I am a career Army officer. I did not go to West Point. I was a uh, ROTC grad. So I I'm a big fan of ROTC and all the military schools that we have that, that do ROTC, which are all major public universities. And they're also, I recently become uh, aware of some of the nuances of the uh, military colleges, which are quite interesting. But we're here to talk about West Point, so I won't bring that up right now. Um, the West Point experience, I would say it would be very much mirror what Jan just said. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a military academy. We're looking for the top schools, as you would anyone going to Ivy League school. The acceptance rate is about the same, seven to eight uh, percent. They bring in anywhere between fifteen hundred and sixteen thousand applicants for a class of about twelve hundred and fifty. So you can figure out it's a very high selection rate. So uh, always, uh, I advise all of my candidates that I talk to to have a plan B. We encourage all. Um, all service academies apply to them all. Um, they're all great. Uh, they, they focus a little bit in different things based on the uniqueness of the service culture. Uh, the Army mission primarily is the ground campaign. So we, uh, we focus in those areas. Uh, as Jan said, the Navy is very much STEM oriented where uh, the, uh, the Army has at West Point is an engineering school, but there are also other majors available, which I'll show you. Um, but the big issue that I really talk to as a career naval or career army officer is, uh, do you want to serve? I mean, are you interested in this because it's an Ivy League school? It'll probably set you on path on a path to a great life after your time, your five years at West Point. Do you really want to do this for the right reasons? And I think that you have to have a sincere desire to do this for yourself, not have because your parents want you to go because it's a $400,000 free education that you don't pay a dime for because that's not the right motivation. You have to want to do this for yourself, first to serve the country, but also because it's something that you want to do. Um, as Jan said, we're looking for the same. We're looking for top level academics, mental toughness, and physically fit people, a well-rounded cadet. That's, that's, our, that's our goal. And uh, I know there are plenty of cadets out there that meet that, meet that. Um, say, as Jan said, you don't pay a dime. Everything is picked up for you. Um, and uh, you do have to spend that four years. And as, as she also said, you know, I had, a, I had a candidate, which I'm not sure I would do, but this shows you the kind of dedication. I had a cadet a couple of years ago that actually finished two years of college at Arizona State, applied his third time and he got in. So that means he finished half of his baccalaureate degree, and now he has to go and perform four years at West Point. But that's what he wanted to do. And so that's the kind of dedication that uh, you really you were really looking for. Um, as Jan said, we're in the same, you know, top tier schools, number three in civil engineering, uh, health. And you can see so just just along the same lines, tops in all areas, just like you would expect any Ivy League school. You're guaranteed a position, just like in the Naval Academy. You know, there's no question about your first job. That's already taken care of. Unlike the Navy that has three primary uh, operating domains, um, the Army is divided into branches. Uh, however, interestingly enough, uh, I, I didn't mention this on the last call, but, uh, the, you know, if we had the Air Force Academy on here, you know, we've established a fifth branch called the Space Force. And there's going to be about 400 
uh, op 400 Space Force billets that are from the Army that are going to the Space Force. So there might even be some opportunities in the academies for the other services to go Space Force. I don't know. But that I found that out just reading the, uh, the publications coming down. Um, history of West Point. It is just like Annapolis. I used to live by Annapolis. I was stationed and lived in Maryland. It is a gorgeous place. West Point's a little bit further north. It's on the Hudson River, right uh, across the river from New York City. So one of the great benefits of uh, West Point, there's not a whole lot to do outside the gates of West Point, but uh, it's very easy to get across, the, get across and go into Manhattan, into New York City, and cadets do that uh, on a regular basis. Um, where am I at here? Sorry, I went backwards. So one of the things we like to, to talk about is all the graduates and the Naval Academy can do that. So when my first visit to West Point was about four years ago, I guess I went up for training and had never really gone there, had didn't go there as a, as a cadet. Um, but what impressed me was just all of the people that I'd either had worked for, worked with, remembered. Um, it's just you know, incredible that the people, and these are just some examples. Benjamin Davis, if you know much about World War II history and the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, they were the first African-American um, aviation unit because the Air Force wasn't in, in existence in World War II. It was part of the Army Air Corps. So you just have amazing CEOs uh, from Johnson & Johnson. You have General Douglas MacArthur, which most of you probably know. Uh, if you're a basketball fan, Coach K, coach of Duke. Um, so they're just Buzz Aldrin if you're interested in astronauts. So even the Army has a, an opportunity to become an astronaut, believe it or not. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, those opportunities are just out there and available for you. I think one of the things that, that uh, I know it would not have been for me, I even look at it now as an older person, is that structured day. You know, you, your day is pretty much controlled from about 520 in the morning up till bedtime. And so that's something that, you know, somebody is, is, that's part of what we're saying is this has to be the right fit for you that you can deal with it with that type of uh, rigorous time controlled schedule. Unlike ROTC, which um, is available to all branches of the service, you know, ROTC is a class. So you're in a regular traditional university, you could go here being in this area, you could go to CLU and actually be part of ROTC at UCLA, for example. So there's these types of areas where you can still be involved in this experience, but not necessarily in the level of depth as you would at the academy. Uh, again, small class sizes, similar to Jan, about 30% of the professors are civilians, professionals in their field living on post. So the hardest part is getting in. Once you're in, they're, they're going to do everything they can to make you successful. And so you just have to put out the effort and, and, and it will happen for you. The Army has, uh, West Point has 36 academic majors. As you can see, there's a lot of STEM, but there's also other areas like kinesiology. Uh, I work in the field of education. You know, kinesiologists can be, you know, athletic trainers. They can be PE teachers. So there's a lot of different areas. If you're interested in international affairs, one of the big areas that really seems to be a growth, certainly in my day-to-day -day job in the junior ROTC environment is the area of STEM and cyber. There's just an enormous a push for cyber careers, cybersecurity. And so cyber science would be one that, you know, if you have an, ap an aptitude for that, I would definitely, uh, definitely, definitely look into. Um, as you can see, and as Jan said, you know, you're going to have to handle a very rigorous academic schedule, plus a lot of the military courses, military leadership courses. Same as well, you know, there's West Point, is a D1, D1 academic or D1 athletic school, but they also have club sports and intramural sports. So everybody at all academies is an athlete. That's just part of that well-rounded well -rounded experience. Um, there's four years of training that you get, that you do throughout your, you know, that are military type training throughout your military career there at West Point that you, that you have to do with. There's other opportunities for uh, military schools like airborne school, air assault school. These are badges that you wear on your uniforms. And a lot of those uh, cadets really, really like that, like to do that while they're in school. Um, as we said, we seek a well-rounded academic leadership and overall physical fitness. 
Same with eligibility, I won't emphasize that. Jan talked about that. Um, there's a questionnaire, there's an application on that you fill out very much the same as the academy. Same thing, you have to have a, you know, a medical physical and you have to get the congressional nominations. So the process, if you're gonna apply to one, you might, might as well apply to all of them because the process will be very similar. Um, what we look for, we look for 60% of the file is academic, 30% is leadership. So leadership can be anything. So if you're gonna be a, uh, play a sport, we'd like to see you be the captain of that sport. If you're going to be a club member in a club, be the president of the club. Um, if you want to get opportunities to go to like Boys State, Girls State, these are sponsored by the American Legion, um, are great opportunities. They look well on a West Point application. You can um, do uh, those kinds of things. You can be an Eagle Scout. That looks great. You know, being an Eagle Scout, that's a, that's a very big accomplishment. So that type of well-rounded approach is, is what we're looking for. Uh, there is some special considerations for uh, that they look at for service connected, children of career military who might be disabled veterans. Um, if you are in, like I'm a junior ROTC instructor, you know, if you did at least two years in uh, JROTC, you get put in, at least at West Point, you get a special, out of that 1,250 in the class, there's about 200 that they'll, they'll categorize with service connected. So that, that gives you a little bit of an edge if you have any of those in your, uh, in your file. Um, application deadlines, pretty much the same. Uh, if you're interested, by all means, you know, uh, contact me and we'll start work. Like Jan and I are the ones that will conduct the interviews uh, for you for the academy. Our job is really to see if this is right, the right school for you and, and it's the right opportunities for you. Because in, in the previous call, we talked about a little bit about ROTC and also enlistment. So the, the military has enormous opportunities and need right now. I know that just... Uh, dealing with the recruiters, the enlisted forces, they're really struggling right now. Certainly the Army is, and I, and I believe the Navy is as well. So uh, the Air Force doesn't seem to have to work as hard. They, they tend to get, get their numbers fairly easily. Um, so this is something you wanna think about before you apply. You know, it's mental toughness, it's physical fitness. Uh, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna do this job? That's really the question for yourself. You know, if you're interested, Follow us online at these various uh, agencies. And uh, that, I think that's it. Any questions? And Rachel, we have six minutes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did I get you? Right. Next time. Um, since we don't have representation from the other academies, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about them. And then I'll go ahead and talk a little bit of what, about what we do. Um, so we talked about the Naval Academy, the, the uh, West Point, uh, the Coast Guard Academy, it's actually part of uh, Homeland Security. They are the only academy that does not require going through the nomination process. It's a direct application. The Merchant Marine Academy is also in New York um, and they primarily train the future merchant mariners. All merchant mariners fly under U.S. flagship. Uh, Coast Guard and, and Merchant Marine Academy are division three schools for athletics where the other academies are division one. So that distinguishes them. They also have a much smaller um, student population, about a thousand uh, cadets and midshipmen at each particular um, academy. And they play in the, just like we have Army Navy games, it's Coast Guard, Merchant Marine. Um, and those are the big rivalries uh, for those games. Um, the other academy is the Air Force Academy. It is a Division I school. It is also a federal academy. That one does require also the nomination process. They are the only academy that is on the West Coast. And um, they are in Colorado Springs. Culturally, Colorado Springs is a, is a much smaller town. They actually have to go into Denver if they want some outside student activity. Um, but they do boast the best weather. They can also commission into the military. Um, 
all of the academies that we always recommend that you apply to all of them. And very specifically, most students are not necessarily aware of their particular characteristics or their uniqueness or their athletic abilities. And without applying to all of the academies, you don't give them an opportunity to look at you in whatever their specific needs are. So we're essentially college advisors that, spe that, spe uh, that specialize in the military academies. Beyond the federal academies, we also work with the state academies and, um, and the ROTC units. So we work with the ROTC units. I, I have a good relationship with UCSB, uh, Cal Baptist for Army, USC for, for, for Navy. I, I, have a, I have quite a few uh, cadets at UCLA. Um, and so we bridge that if you want to become or your parents want to help you become a military officer, it's a very cumbersome process. And what we try to do in the next six minutes is try to organize you and help you through the process, stay ahead of the process, work with the deadlines, work with your resume, help you with the interview process. Sometimes there's some uniqueness or if you're homeschooled or if you have a particular uh, background or an achievement, we help you highlight your achievements so that you convey them confidently and, and you express yourself, you know, all of the sacrifices you've made to get through this process. And, and because it's a, it's a, it's a multi-tiered process, we've got applications going, we've got nomination applications going, we've got multiple interviews going, we've got medical exams, we've got fitness assessments, and we work directly with you. If you have a problem with, with one of your counselors, if you have a problem with a teacher, we'll help you contact them, use the verbiage. We also help you with your, um, with your ALO and your blue and gold officers. And, and if there's a particular issue, if there's a strength you're not gonna be, we'll talk directly with your ALO or your or blue and gold officer and help you. We're here to help you. There are no charges for our services. We, um, we receive grants um, and that equalizes it so that everybody with us gets an equal chance. We answer whatever question you have. You don't have to go through a particular program. We help you with as much as you need and as little as you need. And I thought I recognized the unit's name because I remember your brother. That's all I have to say for myself. Thank you. Rachel, do you mind putting your information into the chat? <laughs> I think Jen just uh, did for me. Oh, you did. I did for her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Did I, did, did I do it? <laughs> We did oh, it. We have one yeah. minute to spare. Okay. Uh, Mr. Unis, do you have any questions at all? If not, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> no worries, Stephen. Um, thank you for participating in our second session. So, Jack, just real quickly, Jack Unis, I remember your brother. I know he's at the Coast Guard Academy. So if you need help, contact me. Thank, right, thank you so much. And with that, Yay. we're ending the session. Thank you so much again. All right. Thank you.